right, Clinton Miner here from Sage Sawtooth Bushcraft, and I'm going to give you part of this next video, and then we'll be doing the rest of it in the shop. But what I want to show you is um, really the idea that I'm about to share with you is something that came to my head starting at the other end of these these eyelet um, drills uh, bits that I, that can be used on larger projects. We'll get to those in the next video. But as I looked at those and tried to figure out how I could put together something that would allow me to put a, a stick onto a small half inch, for example, uh, drill bit. I thought, you know, if I, if I put something big enough on the end of this, a, a loop big enough on the end of this, that, that the stick I put through it is going to hold up while I twist it, uh, it's gonna become ungainly and I'm not gonna have, uh, it's not gonna serve the purpose I want and that is to have something that that is relatively small, compact, and easy to carry light. Um, obviously, I can use these with my brace, just as I can use the, uh, the square-based ones, uh, bits. But I, I, I thought and thought about that, and, and then I got looking at the back end of these, these bits that are made to use with a power drill, and I realized it was a hex. Uh, and I thought, you know what, what else is a hex? That's, it looks just like a bolt. And so I pulled out an old set of, uh, of ratchet, uh, ratchets that I had at the house and started messing with those and found that uh, there are, in this set, all of the larger items here uh, fit one ratchet. And I'll, uh, in the shop, when we put this together, I'll show you what, what, what I'm talking about. Uh, and then the final one, the smaller one, that probably is one I'll use quite a bit, fits in a little smaller uh, socket. So I found an old piece of uh, a hatchet handle, I think. It might be a, a hammer handle. Sawed it off, cleaned it up a little bit. It was in pretty sad shape. Drilled a hole through it. Uh, fortunately, the, the back end of these, so they will work with the, with the actual handle of the ratchet, uh, is is uniform, so I drilled a hole that size, just a little bit bigger than that, and I then mix some epoxy. We'll show you how to do that in the shop. And once I mix the the epoxy, I then was able to stick these in, and I have a set a a, a firm setup that I can use with these with these drills. And again, it's got a self tapping screw on the front of it. Actually, you can just kind of speed things up. And then you watch. Go ahead and start a new hole here. I found that if I kind of slam that a little bit, I get that set. And I simply start turning that. And it will start tapping through. And you can see here, I'm already pulling off some good shavings. Most of that's just this really um, uh, soft bark. But now I'm into actual wood and very effective way to drill a hole and with the seven uh, piece set i have quite a different uh, variety of holes that i can create anything from the size that you want to put a piece of paracord through up through the size that you could actually sharpen the end of a stick or make a, a dowel at the end of a stick and insert it in this and create uh, camp furniture so I'm going to go a little deeper here, just so you can just see how easy this is. You can see I'm still pulling out quite a bit of wood shaving out of that. I'll back it out now. And you can see I've started a pretty good hole, and with uh, a little bit more effort, can work down through that log uh, as deep as that bit will go. And... If I want to go with the smaller size, I simply stick it in the other end. Same process. Let's start it where we can see a little better. And turn that handle. <laughs> Making a lot of noise with the extra bit pieces, but same process. And I've got a hole going through there that'll, that'll uh, accept a piece of paracord uh, if I had a smaller branch. So, great setup. Um, I'm going to tell you how to do this. 
I'm going to tell you a few of the mistakes I made in this prototype and what we will do is rectify those mistakes as we put it together in the shop. Um, and so let's go over to the shop. Hello, Clinton Miner here from Sage Sawtooth Bushcraft. Got to another segment of the video that I wanted to share with you about making a hole. I showed you or shared with you some, some basics of, of the, the carryable kit, the, the backpackable kit. I'm gonna show you some of the process that I went through to make that. One of the things I'll tell you I did is I made a mistake when I, when I put this one together. I, I thought, well, it'll be great to have the two different sizes because the ends of, of all of these are one size, but the smaller one is a different size, so I had to use a different socket. But as I did that, I thought, well, I'll just put them on the opposite sides. But what I found is when I want to grab this and put pressure on it, uh, one of these sockets is sticking into my hand. So as we make the new one, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put them both on, each, uh, on one side so that it's, it's an easier process. I've got a nice flat surface that I can really bear down on if I need to. Um, I'll tell you what, where I got the, the uh, piece of, of hickory that I use for this. I do a lot of, um, well, I love to purchase old axes. And when I do, I quite often will take those and, and refurbish them. And as you can see, this, this old axe uh, handle is, wasn't in too good a shape. So I went ahead and pulled it and, and put a new axe handle on the one that I, that I purchased with this. I think this may actually be a splitting maul that I pulled this out of and and what I I have a bunch of these around these old used axe handles that uh, really aren't good for much of anything else uh, but I always find uses for them and so I don't throw them away um, and all we need is a chunk um, what is that about eight ten inches long um, I'm gonna go ahead and take the handle off the end of this I don't think I'll do that in this video but what I'm gonna do is go ahead and and uh, take this here at the tailgate and we'll we'll measure where it starts to flange out uh, not anything too precise and go ahead then and uh, take that off and we've got our little handle um i don't know if you noticed in the background i'm out in the the sage part of sage to sawtooth bushcraft out in the blm just uh north of middleton it's incredible out here uh, about 50 degrees just an incredible sunshiny beautiful day and uh, felt like this was an opportunity to make make this uh, video share with you kind of how this process works now the second part of what I have I've got a couple of pieces here I've got my handle now and I'll, I'll trim that up and and straighten it up looks good about the right size and we'll uh, rub off the ends a little bit uh, kind of straighten it up maybe polish it up a little bit but the next step we're going to do is uh, is to drill the holes where we can set those sockets and to do that um, I obviously could use my my brace and bit the braces the brace and the bit um, but uh, there's no reason to work harder when you can work smarter so I brought my cordless drill with me today so what I've got to do now and as this set is the same as the one in the package that we will be putting with this this new set i'm just going to use the old set without opening that up and what i will do is is just find which of these sockets i need to use so it looks like i'm using a a nine millimeter seems like to me that a nine millimeter has a a, a normal person's equivalent so 11 uh 30 seconds that's nice to know because actually then I'll be able to get two sets out of this this uh, um, set of ratchets. But so I've got an 11 30 seconds that I'm going to be seating, and then I have the smaller size that I have to find one for. And again, we'll do the same kind of thing. See if we can't find a, both a metric. The metric one is the six millimeter. The uh, real people one now it looks like it is the six millimeter at that it's only going to give us one of those but so i've got the six millimeter that i need to seat as well what i will do then is pull out my drill bits and uh see if i, I can find in my bit set um a 
drill bit that is the equivalent of what I'm trying to drill here. And it looks to me that that's going to be the half inch drill bit. So I'll go ahead and drill. The, the back ends of these are the same size, essentially. So I'll just go ahead and drill two half inch holes in fairly centered in my, uh, my cross beam. And we'll go ahead and get that done. As I said, I'm not going to go all the way through, but I do want it to sit deep enough so that there's a lot of surface uh, between that. Well, they put it away with two bad batteries, but that's okay. We got her done. I've got two holes in this that I can set those, those ratchets in. You see like that? And with those ratchets set in the holes, the, the one's a little tight, but we'll get it in there. With those two ratchets set in the holes, um, and what we'll do then is I'll take some epoxy, set it in that hole, put the, the socket down. And what I, what I did the last time I did this so that there wasn't epoxy pushing up into the hole is I took a small piece of, of, of a plastic bag and put it over the end of the bit and put it into the socket and use that to push it down in. By doing that, I maintained the, the hole that's necessary for the, for, the, uh, for the drill bit to fit in it, for the auger bit to fit in it, without uh, it sticking epoxy to my auger bit and keeping it in there permanently. I'll let that sit up overnight. Once that's done, uh, then it's set and you've got a, an implement a lot like this that you'll be able to uh, use with your auger bits and I will go ahead and put that together and we'll show you how it turned out uh, once it's all put together. Again, fairly easy process, just uh, drill some holes, put a couple of sockets, drill some holes, put a couple of sockets in there and then um, seat those in there with some good epoxy and I've got some Gorilla Glue epo epoxy that I'm sure will hold them in place. I've used the other one sufficiently with some very inexpensive dollar store epoxy and it seems to be holding up well. We'll have this put together so that I can use my auger bits. We'll open up this auger bit set and then I'll have a set that that I can use uh, and a set that I can give away or, or, or have somebody uh, who needs one get a copy of those. So this is just another way that we can, with some very simple tools, very inexpensive uh, implements, uh, the auger bits are under under twenty dollars. The socket set is under six dollars, under seven dollars, I guess. And an old piece of a, an axe handle or some other piece of very hard wood for our crossbeam. Drill a couple holes, a little bit of epoxy, and we've got a set that we can carry with us that is useful. That I can put a various uh, I can put various different sizes of holes very uniform holes, very specific holes that, that I can use to do woodworking uh, or bushcraft with these in any kind of situation, including a grid down situation. We're gonna go ahead and put, put together the final piece of that collection. We've uh, talked about the large uh, augers that we can use to go through multiple logs to make log cabins. That's something I carry around in my truck. Uh, we've talked about the small... In the gimlets. initial video, we talked a little bit about this tool, and I'm going to show you how I've put mine together. What I have here are uh, the, the actual tool that I've made previously. And that tool, uh, as I described, is just a piece of a hickory handle from, uh, I think it was an old uh, hammer. And in that situation, I thought it would make a lot of sense to have it fairly centered and to drill a hole completely through and then to put the, the actual ratchets in from different directions, uh, thereby having a ratchet on one side that was centered that would be for the larger size. As you see that the, the bases of these uh, five or six, excuse me, these six 
uh, augers are large and therefore have to go into this sized um, ratchet. Uh, the final one though is, is quite a lot smaller. Obviously it's a smaller uh, auger, but it doesn't fit that larger ratchet. And so I had to put the second ratchet in there. And, and I thought it would make a lot of sense to have them on opposite sides, therefore centered. Only have to drill one hole, use the uh, glue to glue both ends. But what I found when I did that is when I am trying to push on one of these larger augers and I'm pushing on that um, that handle, I'm actually pushing on this uh, other ratchet in the center of my palm and it makes it very uncomfortable to do. And so what we did when we drilled this, um, we went ahead and just drilled two on the same side. Now it isn't as centered, but that isn't such a problem. Uh, we've gone ahead and uh, drilled those and we are therefore then ready for the ratchets. Now if you recall, these augers all came from Harbor Freight. Um, I had some comments that indicated that uh, I shouldn't try and sell anything from Harbor Freight, and, and I understand that. It is not the highest quality. It simply is a place where I can go and get something that is inexpensive in a situation that, for my circumstances, I'm going to use not very often, and therefore these are going to meet the quality I need. With this video, I will go ahead and post both the link to get these from Harbor Freight and I will post the link to get a better set um, of DeWalt, I think it is, um, auger bits that you can get through uh, Amazon. So I'll put that with this. The other thing I posted with that is a, a ratchet set um, that, again, I purchased, purchased at Harbor Freight. It is very inexpensive. It's not something I'd want to use on a regular basis working on my car or anything like that. But for the purposes I'm using it for, for this auger um, setup that I can carry in my backpack and use in, in uh, limited circumstances, it's going to take care of that. Again, I will post this link as well as a link to a better set that can be purchased through Amazon if you want to put a little more money into this. Now, uh, the other thing I have here is some Gorilla Glue epoxy. Uh, the epoxy is going to create that bond necessary to really secure uh, these ratchets into this handle so that I can get the torque I need to, to drill these holes. And so what we need to do then is we will uh, go ahead and try and open up this auger or this uh, ratchet set. And we will uh, figure out which one of these uh, that we need. That is the, for the larger augers, it's 11 30 seconds. We'll go ahead and put that, uh, that's where that's going to go. For the smaller auger, it's going to be, for the other one, it's a six millimeter. So if you see there, I've got a six millimeter drive and a 11 30 seconds drive for the larger augers. And what we will do now is uh, I'm going to go ahead and mix up some of this epoxy that they we will then use to seat those in the handle. And by doing that, then we have them secured in the handle so that we can use them with the auger bits. So I've simply got a, a little paper plate that I can mix my epoxy on. Uh, the uh, Gorilla Glue uh, epoxy comes with a uh, mixing stick, so we will go ahead and, and mix up some of the Gorilla Glue. And the other thing we'll do here, I'm going to take just a little piece of a, of a plastic grocery bag, cut myself a couple of pieces of that, and I'll show you what that's for here in just a second. In order to get these to seat down where we need them to seat, I found that the easiest way to do that was to um, to use one of the actual auger bits to push them down in. Uh, but my concern was that if I had this auger bit in the ratchet, where the ratchet has a hole all the way through, I'd end up with uh, the epoxy catching the bottom of my auger bit and thereby making it impossible to take it out. So what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and get some of this in the first of these holes. And I'm pretty generous with it. A little bit of it spilling over the edges just gives you a little more bite on the 
on the uh, wood. All right, and then I'll take my ratchet and my auger bit. What I'll do then is I'll take a little bit of that grocery sack and I will back the end of that auger bit into it so that I've got something between the auger bit and the epoxy. Get it over my get it over my plate here and we'll go ahead then and insert this auger bit. Get it down in there. Well into the hole as well as well into the epoxy. And it's set now. Now I can get that out. And you saw when I pulled that out that uh, some of that epoxy was sticking to the bottom of that. So I'm going to go ahead. The other concern I have is that if it, the epoxy fills the hole, then I won't be able to get my auger bit in there. So I'm going to go ahead and put it back in there. And we'll leave it in there for a while while that, that uh, side of the epoxy cures. While that's we're, we're, we're letting that cure, I'm going to go ahead and mix up a little more epoxy for the other side. Again, I'm not too concerned about a little extra because that's going to give me that extra bite. We'll mix that up good. When I did my original uh, auger handle that I've got here, I actually used the epoxy that I purchased very inexpensively again at Harbor Freight. I wanted to kind of try all of the implements that I got at Harbor Freight to see how they would how they would work and how they'd hold up. And quite frankly, I was fairly surprised. They seem to have, uh, have weathered the test. Uh, the uh, the as I twist that uh, those augers, I don't get a lot of. Uh, a lot of uh, slippage. I the, the epoxy is held firm, so I think we've done okay with that. Because I got that one piece of the bag a little gooed up, I'm going to have to cut myself another one. I'll do that. Go ahead then and <laughs> go ahead then and place my uh, auger bit in the uh, in the bag. Put that into the. Um, into the uh, ratchet and then we'll go ahead again and feed the hole um, so we'll get a little drippage and I'm going to clean that up here go ahead and feed that into this hole same situation same process um, get us a good good proportion of that take our uh, ratchet and place it down in the hole try and get it uh, straightened out there and we will let that uh, cure up kind of clean up a little of this excess so they don't have rough surfaces on my my handle And I can always sand that off at the end. I probably put just a little too much epoxy. Go ahead and let that cure up. And once it's cured, then I will uh, have the the setup that I have that I've put together with with my other one. Uh, this time, uh, hopefully, it'll be a little more useful because I have it on one side and I have a smooth surface to put my palm against. But that's the process I went through to put together this um, backpacking auger bit set that allows me to carry around a fairly diverse set of augers that can be used for uh, a number of purposes when we're out in the woods. So as we've worked our way through that log, you see that this is a real effective way to do it. And you see, as, I, as you look at this set, I have the makings of a very, very effective drill set. I can actually add my gimlets to that set and with maybe a couple of pounds, two or three pounds, if I have the whole set, I have a small, uh, my, my bag is actually quite large and so that that is the entire set right there that I can take with me and have a very very effective way of drilling precise holes 
in any number of, of media, including potentially if I wanted a large hole in a piece of leather, I could use the same set just like I did with the gimlets. And so this is uh, something that, that just I put together and I think works quite well. We're gonna go ahead and, uh, this is something I put together that I think works quite well. We've showed you how to do that in the shop, straightened out a few of the issues that came with this prototype. And I think that this is something that any one of you can do for uh, an old hammer handle, a piece of hardwood instead of an old hammer handle shaved to that size, under $20 worth of hardware, and you've got yourself a set that you can do about anything you need to do in the wild, in a bushcrafting situation, in a prepping situation with wood and other soft materials to create the holes you need to construct things and to, to put them together the way you need to. So Clinton Miner here from Sage Sawtooth Bushcraft. Hope you enjoy this. If you enjoy these videos, like to see those thumbs up, thumbs up. If you appreciate these videos and the things we've been sharing with you, we'd ask you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button so we can send that message to, to YouTube that this is something that, that people are understanding and enjoying and that, that this is something that should be uh, go on. And as we always say, this is a preparation so that if, if things go bad, if I'm in camp and I need to change something, I need to fix something, or if power's out or the grid is down, I've got ways to build and, and process things that um, are in addition to the basics of, of even, say, a, a brace and bit set. I can take this with me, much more portable, much smaller, much lighter. Uh, be prepared. That's a key. Be prepared for all kinds of contingencies. Have these options as far as tools. And as we say here at Sage Sawtooth Bushcraft, if you're prepared, you're never really lost. Thank you.